So we are getting ready for Columbia Pro. Last show of, this, of the year for me. And it might be the last show for a little while. So plan is go in, get a win here. That'll qualify me for next year's Olympia. And then I can take a full year off to grow. I've been a madman. I've been go, go, go for the last like two years. I did seven shows last year. Seven the year before that, including the Olympia. And I've just been like on a mission to get that qualification and make it back there. I put a lot of pressure on myself to make it back. You know, it's, it's a huge accomplishment to make it to the Olympia, you know, even one time. But, you know, after making it once, I've had to like prove that it wasn't a fluke and that I'm gonna be a guy that's gonna be there every year. So, you know, last year was tough. I came up short, I got second like three times. And it was the first year where they got rid of the point system where if they still had that, I would I would have qualified. So now you gotta win to make it. I've been close, but I've come up short. And I think it's because I put so much pressure on myself to make it back there. You know, I'm trying to do things right. I was gonna take this whole year off originally. I went through a lot of shit last year and I didn't think I was gonna be able to compete. You know, by getting back into prep and doing this, it kind of got me back on track with my life. So this is like a setup year, kind of using this year to, to get ready for next year where I can be more competitive. You know, I could have pushed this year and made it to the Olympia this year. You know, uh, there was a lot of guys there that I've beaten multiple times. There were opportunities. There were other shows I could have jumped into and made it, but I made a decision to sit that out, focus on rebounding, growing a little bit, filling out, and just setting myself up for next year. So now the reason I'm doing this show to finish the year is again to qualify for next year so that I can take a long off season. You know, I've been go, go, go. I've done so many shows or I haven't had an off season. You know, since I turned pro, I haven't had an off season. I've been able to progress and grow a little bit and, you know, have a few weeks, a few months to make progress, but I haven't had that that real time to focus on what I need to do and that's fill out my physique and grow. You know, I could throw it up right now and just say, all right, I'm gonna focus on growing and focus on next year. But then I'm kind of right back where I was where I still have to rush back to try and qualify next year. You know, if I can get this qualification now, I don't have to worry about rushing back. I can take as much time as I need, a full year if I need it, and just come back on another level. Um, I've done all these shows at like probably 50% of what I could be because I haven't taken that time to take an off season. So to get to where I'm at now, you know, it's, it's crazy that I made it here where, when I'm nowhere near where I can be, you know, without having those off seasons and those growth phases. So I'm confident once I do take the time and, and have that off season, it's going to take me to that next level and we're going to be at the top of the division in classic, so time to make it happen. Earlier this year, I did. Um, I was supposed to compete in Columbia to start the year. I ended up jumping in Atlanta Pro the week before, so I did a six-week prep. Jumped in. I got. Fourth at Atlanta, flew down to Columbia where my coach lives, did the Columbia Pro down there, got third there, arguably could have been second. And then I took a few weeks and competed in Texas, you know, and that's where I was at that point where I could have kept going, could have tried to make it to the Olympia, and I was like, you know what, I'm not trying to make it back to the Olympia and be third or fourth call out again. I want to go to the Olympia and be competitive. Instead of doing more shows, I hit a rebound. I put on 25 pounds, added some size, filled out, and now trans transitioned back into prep to finish out the year back in Columbia. Hey.
Ah, oh, shit. Like, to get to where I'm at, to where you're competing at the Olympia, you know, I would say most people never get there. You know, obviously people get into bodybuilding. Their goal is to turn pro. And then once you're pro, it's all right, I'm gonna make it to the Olympia. Sadly, people that are good at bodybuilding and are gifted with decent genetics, the majority of them will turn pro and then that's really it for him. We'll never really will do anything as a pro. You know, when you get to the pro level, you're not just up against the best people in your area or the best people in the country. You're against the best in the world. You know, you got guys coming from all different countries. Every season, there's another freak popping up from a different country. You know, there's so many guys coming up. It's just, it's crazy competitive to where... You know, having good genetics and working hard, you know, it's not good enough because everyone at that level has good genetics. Everyone works hard. You know, you gotta be, I mean, to be honest, you gotta be a little sick in the head. You definitely gotta be crazy to put yourself through this shit. But above that, the most important thing is you gotta love it. You gotta have the passion for this shit. If you don't have that, like, you ain't gonna go nowhere with it. You know, that's what's gotten me to where I'm at. Um, it's, it's my passion, you know. People say to me all the time, like, dude, why don't you take a break? Like, how, how do you do this? How do you do so many shows? Like, you're putting your body through so much. Like, I love this shit. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing it. You know, I've been able to build a life and build a career out of this. So I'm grateful and I'm blessed to be able to do this shit. So, you know, it's not something I'm gonna take for granted. I'm not super young. I'm not a kid in my 20s anymore. So my window's short. You know, luckily I have coaching to fall back on and focus on once I'm done with competing. But right now I have a small window to kind of maximize my potential and get to where I can be, take it as far as I can go with it. Cause it's gonna go by fast, you know? 10 years from now, I'm not gonna be able to compete at this level. So, you know, you gotta kind of strike while the iron's hot and, and make the most of it when you're in it. But, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not the most genetically gifted. I'm not, I'm not a freak. I'm not a huge guy. Like, I just, I have the passion for this shit and I outwork anybody. You know, that's, that's really it. You know, half the time, especially going through so many preps, low carbs, high cardio, like I don't even have the energy to come in here and fucking lift, but you know, at this point it's my job. And uh, I don't have a choice. You know, if I want to get to where I'm going, you know, you can't, you can't miss days. You can't cut corners. You got to check every box and make the most of every little thing from the diet to the training, to the cardio, the supplements, your body work taking care of your body, your health, you know, it all adds up. And at the top level, like you gotta be checking all those boxes or you're just gonna be left in the dust. It's 24 seven, there's no break. You're not just like going to practice or playing the game like any other sport. Every single thing you do from the moment you get up to the moment you go to sleep, it's, it's to get you to where you need to be. You know, every single thing you put in your mouth, the, wa the amount of water you drink, the amount of steps you get in over the course of a day, everything, you know, there's, there's no, there's no downtime when you're really in it, when you're at the top level, it's, it's, uh, it's nonstop. And that's why it's hard. That's why most people don't make it. You know, it's not for everybody. Everybody wants to be a bodybuilder. Everybody wants to be a pro, but the sad reality is most people just don't have what it takes. You know, even if they work as hard as they possibly can, they're just, you know, not not made for it. And that's all right, you know, there's there's other things out there. There's other sports, other hobbies. You know, it's, when you go up against someone like me where it really is my life, 
you know, it's it's hard to compete with that. Yeah, that one was heavy. You know, it, it comes with a lot of sacrifice. Obviously, you sacrifice time and you know, missing out on being able to go out and go to parties and hang out with your friends, you know, and the, the hardest part is you sacrifice relationships. You know, I've, I've definitely, you know, I can stand here the man I am today and, and admit that I've ruined plenty of relationships because I put so much into this where I didn't have anything left to give in the relationship. You know, it's not something I'm proud of, but at the same time, you know, I am where I am. And if I didn't go through all that, maybe I wouldn't be here. So, you know, as you go along with it, obviously I've gotten better. But, um, you know, you got to kind of, it's hard to find balance in bodybuilding. You have to learn to create the balance yourself. And uh, that's the hard part. You know, it's, for me, you know, there's not enough time in the day. Right now, when I'm this close to a show, I work and I prep. That's it. I don't go out, I don't socialize. I even lose touch with some of my best friends. You know, obviously they'll check in on me here and there, but you know, I'm not spending time with friends and family. I'm in my own little bubble. I have tunnel vision and I'm focusing on doing what I need to do. You know, last year I went through a bad breakup um, right after my season ended. And that's part of the reason why I wasn't going to be able to compete this year. You know, it was, it was hard on me mentally having somebody there who supported me, who traveled with me in my shows, prepped all my food, you know, was there for me and helped me, you know, be where I was and, and get to that high level, you know, and then losing that and having to do it all myself, it was a tough adjustment. But you know what they say, they say breakups make bodybuilders. So, you know, here we are. When you're able to push through adversity and go through shit like that, it makes you stronger, you know, mentally, emotionally, and that in turn makes you a better bodybuilder, and more importantly, it makes you a better person. You know, it's, it's bigger than bodybuilding. You know, you're growing your physique, you're growing your body, but you're also growing as a person through all this, and uh, that's, that's the beauty of bodybuilding. You know, it comes a lot of sacrifice, yeah, but, Again, it's on you to create that balance to where you're not ruining relationships. So I'd say it's a work in progress for me right now. <laughs> right now, I'm, I'm on my own and I'm in my own little bubble and that's okay, you know? I'm not looking to date, I'm not looking for a relationship. Honestly, I don't have time for it. It's not a priority to me right now. Right now, I need to prioritize myself and get into where I need to be. You know, once I'm there, then you know who knows what'll happen. But right now, you know, the road to the top is lonely and, and that's okay. You know, I, I, uh, I thrive under pressure and I thrive being alone and, and doing it myself. So here we are. I gotta do 40 minutes of cardio after this. Right now I'm doing an hour fasted in the morning. That's how I start my day. An hour on the Stairmaster. And then after I train, when I feel like I'm dead and I'm ready to eat or fall asleep or die, I gotta hop back on and get another 40 minutes. Shit like that, that's the shit that people aren't willing to do. You know, even pros I compete with, they're like, dude, you're crazy. I don't know how you do that much cardio. Well, it's like, motherfucker, I beat you because I did that cardio. You know, that's why I'm known for my conditioning because I push it. You know, I'm not here fucking leaning over on the Stairmaster on level two, just going through the motions. You know, I'm trying to treat my cardio like training. You know, you got to push that shit.
It's a necessary evil of press. It's the one part of bodybuilding that I fucking hate and always will hate is the cardio, but it's a necessary evil. You just gotta do it. Especially after like a hard workout, that's the last thing you wanna do. You know, forcing yourself just to do it, you know, it definitely does go crack in for sure. My dad was the toughest, baddest motherfucker I've ever met in my whole life. You know, this guy was like a legend in his neighborhood, known as being like the toughest dude there is. So my whole life I had to live up to like, you know, filling those shoes, you know, as his son. And, uh, you know, now my dad's not with me. Right before I turned pro in 2020, my dad passed away. He died in my arms and it was a traumatic experience. You know, if I wasn't a mentally strong person, that shit would have broke me and would have fucked me up for the rest of my life. Instead of that, I was able to turn it into something positive. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make this shit happen. I'm gonna turn pro to honor him. And I was able to do that. And now it's like, you know, he's the one who got me into working out and all this. So bodybuilding is my way to kind of carry on his legacy. So, you know, it's that's why it's so meaningful to me, you know. People say like, oh, bodybuilding shouldn't be your whole life. You know, you should have other things. For me, it's deeper than that. You know, it's like the most influential man in my life is the one who got me into this. And I carry his name, I'm Anthony Barbera III. So I'm literally carrying his legacy. You know, now I'm trying to make a name for myself and uh, be half the man he was. If, I'm, <laughs> if I could be half as tough as he is, then I'm, I'll be just fine. But um, you know, yeah, again, again, it's just being raised by someone like that. You know, he he instilled those, you know, the that that stuff in me, and made me who I am. You know, on top of that, you know, playing sports, being an athlete my whole life. You know, you just throughout life, and you go through shit like that. It it that's what builds that that character where you're able to, you know, overcome adversity. And, be able to get through hard shit like that. You know, that's life. Shit happens. It's never gonna be easy. Bad shit's always gonna happen. You know, you can either be a bitch, throw a pity, par pity party and feel sorry for yourself, or you can fucking do something about it and, and push through and make shit happen. You know, I choose the second option and I always fucking will. I, I can't stand I don't know how people can go to the gym and stink. Like, how can you work out and how can you go through a workout smelling like shit? Just knowing that you smell like shit. Everyone around you smells and you're ruining everyone around you you work out. Like, how? I don't I don't know how people can do it. I'm, I'm going to, like, start putting, like, deodorant or, like, axe in my bag and start fucking handing it out so people are stinking this place up. Oh, yeah. Fuck, that was heavy. Like absolute shit, and this goes back to what I said earlier about passion. You can't fake passion. If you don't have that passion, there's no way you're pushing through shit like this. Most people would have chalked it up halfway through this workout. All right, that's enough for today. I'm gonna go home. We'll come back tomorrow, get a better one in. But fuck that. That's that's not gonna. It's not gonna get you anywhere. You gotta be able to push through times like this where you feel like shit, where you have no energy, where all I want is some fucking Wendy's, soda, some cookies, maybe some ice cream. But I gotta earn that shit. I'll have that shit a month from now after I after I win this shit. All right, one fifty time, going right in.
I try to set an example, but kids these days, everyone wants, they want that instant gratification and expect it to happen overnight. And it just doesn't work that way. You know, so you see kids throwing way too heavy weight around in the gym with shit form, ego lift and lift as much as they can, thinking it's gonna get them to where I'm at. And even worse than that, you know, you see for here, kids in the gym like, oh bro, I'm taking this, I, I'm, I'm running this SARM or this steroid. It's like, dude, when you're young like that, your testosterone levels are already through the roof. You don't need any of that shit. All that stuff's gonna do is it's gonna shut down your body from producing testosterone. So when you're at that point where your testosterone should be at its highest, you're taking all this shit that's suppressing it and knocking it down. So you're just fucking yourself up and then you're never gonna come back from that. So by the time you're my age, you're burned out. Your body isn't even producing tests anymore and you're fucked. You know, you gotta be smart. You gotta play the long game. It takes time, it takes years. And that's what bodybuilding is. It's doing the hard shit over and over and over again consistently for a long period of time and that's where the results come from it doesn't come from all these fancy fucking exercises you see on social media it doesn't come from throwing max weight around you know it comes from being smart there's a difference between lifting weights and bodybuilding in bodybuilding you're not just moving the weight from one point to the other you're contracting your muscle to move the weight so you shouldn't be able to lift as heavy as you possibly can if your form's right and you're like activating everything and engaging like you should be, you know, and that's the hardest thing for these young guys to learn. You know, it takes time to build that like muscle connection too, that mind muscle connection and be able to contract everything hard. It comes to the time, shit, I've been doing this, what, eight years now and I'm still learning. I'm still building better connections and stuff like that. You know, it's always, you're always a work in progress. There's always, more you can do to get better. Don't try and uh, shortcut the process because all it's going to do is it's going to hold you back from getting there in the long run. What's up, little guy? I got it for you, bro. Don't, don't worry. See, there you go. There, that's, a, that's a true bro right there. <laughs> I think I just pulled something in my fucking head. Are you serious, dude? Like right. Right here. It's a bitch getting old, man. This kid's falling apart yeah. on him. He, he does, he does, he does, he does one pro show and it just fucking falls apart. That's a wrap on back day. I think I died like 10 times during that workout. But we made it. Now nice, quick some posing and then uh, 40 minutes of cardio. And then I'll probably fall asleep in the recovery room. But you might find me here tomorrow morning.